make more power. Keep your bike running cool with VP Stay Frosty Coolant, available in two formulas, race ready, designed to be glycol free and track approved, and high performance with freeze protection for street applications. Visit VPRacingFuels.com to learn more. Time to start eating better? If only it were that easy. Fresh and Lean thinks it is. We make the food you love with meals conveniently delivered to your door, made with fresh organic ingredients. So if you're looking to eat healthier, we got you. Meals ready to heat and eat in under three minutes. So wherever life takes you this year, you'll be ready. Now how easy is that? Fresh and Lean, feed your potential. The American Motorcyclist Association sanctions Moto America Professional Road Racing, the home of the AMA Superbike Championship. We also sanction more than 100 amateur road racing events across the country, offering member discounts on lodging and gear and AMA member-exclusive roadside assistance options for emergencies. The AMA also supports your right to race. Backing the RPM Act, join today at AmericanMotorcyclist.com or call 1-800-AMA-JOIN. What we do here at Rai Helmets is actually, in racing services, is a piece that we use for our research and development. There's not many places where we can actually use video to confirm how a rider crashes. Um, we can't use video on a street to see how a cheat pad works. And when you do it in a laboratory, you don't get the same conditions you're going to get when you're out in the actual air and the wind and everything. Um, you can try to use other devices, but you'll never replicate the real world scenario. So that's where racing services really becomes very important. It's uh, all about the research and development. You know, I talk to Mr. Arai every Thursday night, and we have, I discuss everything that we've seen from the races. At, it doesn't matter if it's IndyCar or Moto America, we discuss everything that went on and what all the riders' feedback was, because they want to know exactly what the riders are feeling. But you know, one of the biggest parts of research and development when it comes to the, the helmet, of course, is the helmet's number one job, which is protection. So critically important to Arai is that round smooth shell. Because what happens is the helmet comes down and it bounces and glances and burns off that impact energy instead of transferring it to the rider's head, which is really important to us. So the glancing is something that we've seen from all the videos and all the riders that we've seen, unfortunately, go down. But it helps us when we're out here to see that video and go, okay, well, the rider went down like this, he hit this portion of it, and this is what happened to the helmet. So we can take and put the entire story together. Because if you have just one part of the story, well, from the video, you can't really tell what, where the helmet's been hit or where, where, how bad the helmet's been hit. So that's so important, and that's the one big thing that we found through all our years doing this. Rider protection is number one. Hey everyone, my name is Alex Archangelski, CEO and co-founder of Break Free Technologies, and this is Break Free, a motorcycle helmet accessory that easily mounts to pretty much any motorcycle helmet out there, and it's the simplest way to improve your visibility, day or night. Break Free's got a sensor array built into the unit itself, so there's nothing to mount to the motorcycle, there's no wiring, everything is inside the unit. It's got 100 ultra-bright LED lights that light you up during the daytime and nighttime. Anytime you slow down, Break Free activates, no matter how. Engine braking, downshifting, regular braking, emergency braking, you slow down, it turns on. Break Free is a small company. We're only four co-founders and one employee at this point, and we're all passionate motorcycle enthusiasts. We love riding, and we've created this product for our community. We wanted to make sure that motorcycle riders are safe and seen out there on the roads. We saw a huge need for visibility, and that's why we've created this product. Hi everybody, welcome back to beautiful Ridge Motorsports Park for Superbikes at the Ridge for Moto America. And we are getting ready for the Roland Sands Design Super Hooligan National Championship. First of the doubleheader races coming up here. I'm Greg Creamer, joined by Roland Sands himself. And Roland, 
looking forward to this one. It's one, it's a huge entry here, which means this race is going to be fascinating with lots of traffic and all of the, uh, you know, the great and challenging implications that involves. But uh, the other side of it is uh, just what we've been seeing from Andy Debrino on that uh, on the KTM. Tyler O'Hare right up front. I mean, there's a great group up in that sharp end, uh, end, you know, end of things here that are really looking stout. Yeah, we're seeing some really competitive times out of the Hooligan guys, and I, I didn't think we'd we'd be this close to Superbike times and Supersport times this weekend. You know, um, I think Andy probably thinks he can do a 44 if he needs to, but. The pace is hot in this Mission Food Super Hooligan Race 1 here at the Ridge. And, uh, you know, we've got a, a lot of different bikes on the grid. Got hands up and... Whoa, whoa. what's happening here? Is he just trying to get... Uh, all right, there wasn't any any issue, really. You just... Yeah, usually get your hand up in front of everybody like that. That's a bit of a worry for yeah. Tyler there, but uh, it didn't seem like he had too many problems after that pulling out and smoking a couple of wheelies yeah. down the front straight there. <laughs> getting what? set, getting his getting his nerves all shook out yeah. and getting ready to rip. Well, you know, Tyler's a pretty savvy guy, right? And it, it, it seemed like there were a lot of guys that were trying to get out in a big, big hurry out there. And I think he just went, yeah, I don't need to do that. But let's go back to Daytona, take a look at some of the racing that unfolded here. Look at that, Kyle Onsorg. That thing almost looped out. And look at that start uh, by Stefano Mesa. That's what you see in this oh. class. And look at the flat tracking right there by Tyler O'Hara. Yeah, it was a pretty good scrap in race one. And Bobby Fong had his sights set on the win, but unfortunately, he's got Tyler O'Hare right behind him on the last lap. And you know what happens at Daytona. <laughs> Tyler played that draft to absolute perfection. There just wasn't anything Bobby could do, uh, you know. And you try and check up, you know, Tyler would have checked up a little bit as well. But uh, what a run. Uh, and uh, just a great strategic drive uh, and, uh, and ride by Tyler there. I think what, what Tyler always says is, you know, maybe Bobby was playing checkers and he was playing chess on that one. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, that's the uh, deal sometimes, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's, that's, it, that's how it shakes out, especially at a place like Daytona. But here at the Ridge, it's going to be a completely different battle with that KTM of Andy Debrino. They call it the scalpel for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> here you go, Tyler O'Hare. Perfect 50 points, Jeremy McWilliams. 14 back. Well, look at that. Mark Price comes in here. Also on a, uh, a uh, KTM, so he was showing some pace at Daytona. Bobby Fong, obviously, looking pretty quick. Nate Kern right there in the top five. Stefano Mesa on the uh, Energica doing an absolutely superb job. And that bike should be even better here, I would think. Oh, the Energica, yeah. yeah I think we're, uh, you know, this is a great track for the Energica. Yeah. And, um, you know, them, giving them the opportunity to get in the top five here in the Super Hooligan races on that Energica. Uh, it, it's a unique place here at the Ridge. Lots of corners, lots of flow. This is such a flowy track, and it's really a rider's track. It truly is. It, uh, a technical rider extraordinaire can get the job done here. And, uh, and Michael Hill right now is down amongst a bunch of them. What's up? Yeah, I'm down in the pit lane uh, down here and uh, just rolling along pit road. There's a red flag now preventing anybody else from going out onto the grid. Stefano Mesa on the Energica bike has been stopped at the end of the pit lane. Now, I don't know, uh, again, I'm, I don't read the rules uh, on the, uh, the the super hooligans, but he hasn't made it out for the sighting lap. He's not on the grid. He should be on the second row of the grid, I believe, in fifth place. They have stopped him, and I don't know uh, if you can just uh, put the camera down here, you'll see him at the end of the pit lane. They have stopped him from going out, Greg, and uh, this could spell a big big problem for Stefano Mesa he's not on the grid yeah we have a shot of him right here we're watching and uh, he's having a pretty emphatic conversation right now with the officials and they're explaining what's going on and Stefano's a class guy isn't he and you can just see him there nodding his head going well it is what it is I'm gonna have to deal with it and uh, he'll make the best of it yeah I mean if he's gonna have to start from the pit yeah. lane it sounds like but um, you know that's sometimes the issue and that's that is what it is so there is your pole sitter on that KTM and Andy Debrino. A lot of local track knowledge here. This is the home track. Uh, it's had lots of runs here uh, over the uh, over the days. And Jake Lewis, another guy to really, I think, keep an eye on here as well. He's uh, coming off of a, a couple of really good rides already. And I think this is going to be fun. So, all right, here we go out on the warm up lap. And uh, we are getting ready to get after this one. It's going to be the Roland Sands Design Super Hooligan National Championship Race One from the Ridge. You know, Bobby's going to have a lot to prove. <laughs> Mission Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is brought to you by 
Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. Well, as we're watching them out on the warm-up lap, let's take a look at this track. 2.47 miles, so we'll call it two and a half. Nine left-handers, seven right-handers. You can see constructed in 2011, a technical rider's dream. That is a lot of corners. <laughs> yes, it is. And you can imagine some of these guys, their first time getting on the racetrack was yesterday. Yes. And they're going to be racing today after only a day and a half on the racetrack. They've only had three sessions, and they're going to ride into a main event here on Saturday, which is sometime the struggle with these guys, you know? Uh, if these guys aren't learned, used to learning new tracks yep. really quickly, you know? Yep. They're going to have to get on pace very fast. They're just going to have to dial it up, absolutely. Let's take a look at our starting lineup. We talked about it. Andy Debrino on pole on the, key uh, the KTM. Tyler O'Hara on the Indian in the uh, middle of that front row. And Jeremy McWilliams, his teammate, on the outside of that front row. Then Jake Lewis having a really good uh, weekend here. Bobby Fong uh, would have been, I think, a lot farther up. He had that off in second qualifying. Uh, and then Stefano Mesa, perhaps, starting from the pit lane. Corey West, A.J. Peasley, Mark Price in row three. Sean Kreesat, Mallory Dobbs, great qualifying run for Mallory. And Kyle Onsorg there as well, row five. Alex Taylor, Stephen Shakespeare, Danny Dominguez, and Patricia Fernandez. Is West, Hannah Johnson, and Jordan Eubanks in that uh, six row, row seven. Uh, Eric Stahl, Shalina Moreta, Alex Clark in row eight. It's Chris Jeffrian who had an off earlier. Uh, Michael Smith and Paul Mitchell. I'm not sure Chris is going to be uh, running here. Row nine, the uh, it is the uh, Brandon Quaid, number 900, then Charlie Condit, Joseph Gale, and Brett Bledsoe rounding out the field here. So, uh, like we said, big field, short, tight, busy track. This is going to be interesting. Well, we got guys riding water-cooled bikes as well as air-cooled yeah. bikes. You can see some of the discrepancy there, and a lot of that is due to the actual motorcycles these guys are riding. Some of these guys are riding Harley street bikes yeah, or, I mean, or Indian Chief, you know, some, some very big motorcycles to start out 600 pounds plus. Oh, <laughs> well, and we've got that uh, that championship that you track for the the American V Twin Air Cool Challenge, and Charlie Condit, the highest placed of the riders in that championship here. And we just got word from Michael Hill that Mesa will start from the track, but it will be at the back. So uh, that uh, sixth place starting uh, effort kind of gone here. And Bobby Fong, after that off, uh, he's going to be interesting to see what he's going to be able to dial up here. Lights are on. We're green. Super hooligans are underway. Good start by Andy Debrino. And Roland Sands next to me is going, okay, calm down, guys, calm down. Everybody get through this first turn. And uh, so far, so good. But that's maybe a third of the pack coming through here. All eyes glued. Ooh, a couple of little, I think, nudges back there. But nobody off. Looks like everybody made it through, Roland. Sigh of relief, and off we go. Andy definitely got the start that he wanted, and he's got Jake Lewis right behind him. I think this is the first time Jake Lewis has been on this new Pan America, and we're seeing what he can do, getting right up into second place and a podium position, wanting to catch Andy to bring him on this first lap, not let him get away. Yeah, Jake is uh, just an, having an on-form weekend here. Big lunge down to the inside there, but a little bit early on that turn in, and that just you just have to get out of the throttle for so long. Wrapping around turn six, now through seven, and down into a tricky, tricky piece of racetrack down here rolling in a side nice move there and I think that was a pass for position yeah he came by Jake Lewis there and yeah. we got we got our second place qualifier back in fifth place right now yeah Tyler O'Hara uh, yeah didn't, didn't get the start he wanted now he's uh, in chase mode there he is he's got by Corey West but now he's got a sight set on Jake Lewis Jake's not gonna well Oh, no, he, he's behind his teammate, Jeremy McWilliams, in fourth. Yeah, he rounded up uh, Jake nicely there. So now, see what he's going to be able to do. Second place qualifier, but he was a good six tenths of a second off of. Uh, oh, that was a nice pass. I think that was Corey West. Yep. That is a, that's a wild place to try and pass him, but it it's is. tight. There's not much room there for these bikes. They are big and they are heavy. Well, this is one of those tracks where, I mean, it's a, it's a great track, but it's challenging to pass here, isn't it? Turn one into the chicane and maybe 13 are your two best areas. So otherwise, you've got to get creative. It's pretty difficult to get set up here. Yeah, I mean, you don't I have bet. these long straightaways and not crazy heavy braking. It's just so much flow, and you've got to set your pass up a couple corners ahead of time. 
And here comes Jeremy McWilliams man talk about some experience here on that 99 Indian. And he is coming up and closing on Andy Debrino here on that KTM. And as we watch this battle, let's check in with Michael. Yeah, we stood down on the start line, cracking start from Jeremy McWilliams. He looking, uh, he's looking really, really good. But I tell you what, I've been keeping an eye on Stefano Mesa. I was quite close to uh, turn one. Started at the back of the grid. He passed about 20 people into turn one like a knife through butter. He ended the first lap, guys, in 10th on the Energica electric bike. Keep your eyes on Mesa. He's not done. And keep your eyes on this enthralling six-wheeler fight at the front because you just get the feeling this is not done either. Oh, no way. And, you know, for for Mesa, that, one of the strong suits of that Energica bike is it's just absolute immediate torque when you twist that throttle. And uh, he obviously used that to huge effect here. And McWilliams coming. He took a look at Debrino, didn't he, going into turn six. But that's one of those corners when you turn in a little bit too early there. Uh, it just pinches you. And if you're going to stay in, in the groove. Oh! oh, and he thought about it again, looking into a 13. And uh, just wasn't quite close enough but uh, I think he's uh, he's letting people know I'm coming you know that Indian's got quite a bit of horsepower and it's pretty peppy and when you get in situations like that like Jeremy's in you were just trying to be so gentle on the throttle the brakes the handlebars the input on these bikes it is it's really it's explosive when you just try and got to be careful with the bike and get it into the corner gently so as you know the more I love the phrase peppy, the more peppy a bike is, the more sort of almost delicate you have to be riding it, right? I'm not going to say these bikes are easy to ride. Right, yeah. They're not easy to ride fast anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's kind of one of the concepts here, isn't it? These are bikes that, uh, you know, in many ways are pretty much right off the street in, in a sense. And now you uh, are putting them on a racetrack and uh, up against a wide variety of other machines as well. And right here is where Jeremy tucked in a little early there. But this is one of those of those turns that if you turn in too early, uh, it floats out, then you got to come back. And if you uh, turn in a little bit too early, you just got to roll off the throttle for a bit. And uh, again, Debrino uh, really strong down through turn eight. Now, that's a tricky piece of real estate as we've talked about. And uh, that KTM just really flows around here. It does. It's this is the kind of track the KTM was built to go fast around. I mean, it was developed in Europe. And it's funny, the guy chasing him down, Jeremy McWilliams, did quite a bit of work <laughs> on well. the bike. And now he gets an opportunity <laughs> to get in front of Andy. What a fantastic pass that was. Well, and that's up in that in that turn 11, which is a, a decreasing radius corner. So you want that wide arc in. But when somebody's chasing you, you leave that open that wide, they're just going to dive down and try and park you. And Jeremy's got the experience to make that work. And uh, he just laid in a beauty of a pass there. You know, Jeremy has yet to win a super hooligan race. It's kind of almost hard to believe. I know it, it is. Yeah. And, and this is kind of his specialty. He really likes riding weird motorcycles. And, you know, from the qualifying perspective, I mean, he was he was a few seconds back, actually, from Andy. So now to see him in the race, I mean, he's obviously a Sunday man, a Saturday man as of there you today. Go. There but, you go. Yeah. Um, he knows how to get the job done when the green flag He's drops. He's a racer. He's a racer's Man, racer. A racer. A Look racer's at that racer. now. Tyler uh, glomming onto the back of Debrino here. So he's in a, uh, a uh, Indian sandwich right now on that KTM. And uh, Tyler's going to be, ooh, Debrino. That looked like a little bit of a wide run there. But boy, it didn't slow him down. He actually just kind of hooked him up and launched him up the hill. Here's that run now through turn five. A little flick to the right here. And then the, the first of some of these really tricky corners here. And Tyler trying the outside. He's kind of wondering whether he's going to try and now square up underneath, and he just wasn't close enough to get that done at Debrino. He's Andy looks to run a little bit wide. There's that turn seven. At six. That's turn six. He yeah. runs a little bit wide in turn six, and that's I think where Jeremy got him the lap before. So I think Tyler's probably going to be looking at trying to make that same move if yeah. Andy keeps making that mistake. Yeah, here they come. This is actually it. It was into 11 where Jeremy got oh. uh, Debrino. But they're similar corners in many ways. And now you can see Jeremy uh, knows I had a little bit of room. So he ran it a little bit wider and got that exit. And that is the fast way through that corner. But as we said, if you got somebody right behind you uh, and you run that wide line, they're just going to stuff it up inside and then try and park you. And uh, so, oh, and Tyler deep into 13. Tough to get it slowed down. Man, he made that look easy. What a pass by Tyler O'Hara. I guess he has that number one plate for a reason. Huh? Yeah, he does. He's a pretty crafty guy. <laughs> yes, he is. He's a pretty crafty guy, and he took advantage of the FTR's power there yeah. and, and did what he could to get by him. 
Let's take another look at that because it was just pretty as we watched Tyler whistle through here. Uh, and he just, he knew what he wanted right from the exit at 12. Yeah, just cleanly passed. I mean, that was a, that was a thing of beauty. Just played that to absolute perfection, and then didn't overrun the exit of, of, of the corner. You don't play it much better than that. Yeah, that's textbook. And considering yeah. considering the weight advantage that the KTM has, I'm actually surprised he's able to get the thing slowed down so well going into the chicane. I mean, this is an aggressive pass. Yeah, it's now an Indian 1-2. I'm down here in the pits uh, with the team, and there are no team orders between these two guys. They're good friends off track. They've worked very, very hard. Looks as though Tyler's looking on the inside. They're almost going to touch uh, at the apex, and a uh, couple, of, couple of worried uh, looks down here, but everyone with big smiles on the face. These two are free to race to the flag, just what we want to see. Man, and look, at, yeah, exactly, Michael and Tyler just trying to round up on uh, McWilliams, and McWilliams just uh, enough pace to uh, keep him behind him. Let's see what happens here. Now Jeremy knows that Tyler's right there. Uh, I would have thought he would have, you know, maybe defended a little bit more and gone in, uh, but uh, opted not to do that. But if Tyler's close enough, we saw how good he is on the brakes down here into 13. I don't know if he's going to be close enough here to make something happen, but uh, if he is, he's going to go for it. But actually, McWilliams got out of the 12 there really well. You know, these guys really are the best of teammates, too. You know, they really show how two teammates can work together last year. Jeremy actually helped Tyler win the championship at the end of the year on the Indian FTR 1200. And um, this year, I don't think there's any team orders as of right now. we got a little bit too many races to go, but Tyler is leading the championship. And... Um, I'm sure Jeremy Jeremy wants to win this race. You bet. Without a doubt, he wants to get a super hooligan win. Yeah, well, it, like we said, it's kind of tough to believe that he hasn't yet. So uh, he's going to be uh, just riding the wheels off that thing. They've been able to gap Debrino just a little bit here now and are easing away just a smidge here. Three laps to go at this point. And, uh, you know, had this been a longer race, I might think, well, you know, was Debrino just making sure he's got some tire left? But uh, it's a short race, so uh, they're going after it here. But you can see Tyler, even though I'm sure he'd love to have his buddy, Jeremy, get a win, he's not just going to give it to him again, trying to sweep the outside. And uh, he gets there, but it's the longer way around. And now does he get to run out of it to stuff it down? This is a really difficult place to make a pass. We've seen some huge wrecks down here at the bottom of eight. And uh, he just thinks the better of it once again. And rolling your eyeballs are about the size of half dollar uh, coins right now. This is something else. You know, both these guys were on my team last year, so I just know the camaraderie and what's going through their minds when they're racing imagine. each other. And they, they want to push each other to go fast, and they want to beat each other absolutely, but at the same time, they don't want to crash into each other. Exactly. Not like anybody who does, but, you know, more Especially so with your teammate. And friends, yeah. Yeah. But you know the one thing, every time Tyler goes and rounds up, on McWilliams, it pinches McWilliams a little bit on his exits from those long corners, and it's allowed Debrino because uh, they're both running a little slower than the optimum line. And Andy is right back into this here. You can see him just flash through in the background. Corey West, by the way, is in the four spot on the number 13 team Saddleman Harley, and Bobby Fong on uh, the Roland Sands Design Sacramento Mile um, Harley as well sits in that fifth place with Jake Lewis in sixth. So uh, and Stefano Mesa has fought his way up now into that the uh, top nine. But now we got traffic coming into play here, too. So this is going to be really interesting. And sometimes traffic uh, can change things up here and uh, maybe help Tyler up just a little bit. And now the question is, does Debrino get through clean or is he going to get held up? He got through pretty well, too. So and then more traffic ahead. Here we go. Wow. Well, these guys can hear it coming. It's a yeah. quite a discrepancy in speed. So we're catching them on the, I think we're the fifth lap. Fifth lap in, sixth lap in. So yep, six yeah, lap in, there's so. quite a bit of speed differentiation. But, you know, they're getting by clean. Ooh, somebody in off front. in the back. Thought I saw a plume of smoke back there. I don't know that it was a crash. Could have been just somebody running wide. And here we go, Tyler, trying that outside again. You can just see it just ends up being more real estate and uh, just doesn't quite get it done now that climb up and this is where jeremy made that pass for the lead and uh he's he has enough confidence that he's got enough of a margin that he's going to run in and uh use that wide entry to get the exit out here and uh here we go boy how uh, how about this though tyler much much closer 
uh, than he has been. We've seen him make a pass. I'm not sure he's close enough. Here he oh, comes. He's going, he's going, he's going for going, it. He's going. Does he get? He got it parked again. Tyler absolutely a demon on the brakes and makes the pass. Now traffic. McWilliams just going to follow him through that uh, that rider and onto the front straight. One lap to go. Does McWilliams have an answer here? He's close. Traffic in front as well. You see the white fly. That blue flag was to let that other rider know you've got faster riders coming up behind you. And here we go through the chicane. You can see Jeremy looks back. Debrino now about a second and a half back. He didn't get through traffic quite as well. And one of the things whenever you get in traffic, it doesn't matter what you're riding or driving, horsepower and pep, as you called it, yep. is your best friend. Absolutely. And they pulled the gap on Andy enough where I don't think they're going to have to deal with him. Yeah, it's now mano a mano here on this final lap. But well, I'll tell you, Tyler, once he got through, He's found a little something here, and the question is now going to be, can Jeremy find an answer? And now he's following, and uh, if he sees something where Tyler's doing something a little bit differently, maybe he can deal with it here. But, man, Tyler, that's, a, what, about a 10-bike length lead right now. It's going to be tough for Jeremy to close yeah, that's, that up. that's a lengthy gap to try and make up on the last lap. I mean, you know, Tyler, when he, when he sees a little bit of open air, I mean, he's going to let it go, and that's what he's done. Yeah, but that pass into 13, he came from Seattle to make that <laughs> pass. That was pretty spectacular. It's a long ways back and just executed it beautifully. And now, one more time, up and through that crucial turn number 12 and heading in to 13. Both of them glance back, realize it's just us. Now Tyler's just got to get it woed down. Beautiful through there. Jeremy a little wide to the apex, obviously pushing hard. And now last time through 15 and coming out and heading toward turn 16 onto the front straight. And Tyler O'Hara on the throttle coming through. And that's going to be his third straight win in the uh, Roland Sins Design Super Hooligan National Championship. An absolutely stellar race. Couple of brilliant passes, uh, one to pick up second, and then one to go for the win. And that one for the win was amazing. And uh, Debrino does come home completing the podium. Then it's Bobby Fong, uh, excuse me, 13 Corey West in fourth, Bobby Fong in fifth. And look at this, Stefano Mesa is uh, coming through here and fought his way all the way up into the seventh spot with uh, Jake Lewis in the sixth place. That was one heck of a ride by Stefano, and it just makes you wonder what could he have done from that uh, second row. Yeah, well, I mean, to see that electric bike come back from starting on the, on the grid and getting back up to seventh place, what an incredible first lap he had. Oh, yeah, I mean, up so many. Here's that pass once again, and look at that. Jeremy got out of 12 pretty well. Look at that margin. And Tyler goes, yeah, I think I can do this. Yeah, that's a demon level right there. That's Sasquatch level. <laughs> that's a Sasquatch level pass. <laughs> that is unbelievable. We have seen Sasquatch has been spotted here in the uh, in the <laughs> Olympic National Forest by this track here. And it is, uh, uh, he just happens to carry the number one plate. What a pass uh, that was. Uh, that one's going to go down in the highlight reel, that's for sure. And, you know, for McWilliams, obviously, you know, it's, uh, it's his friend, it's his teammate. And uh, look at that. Here's there we go. Stand-up wheelie there by uh, Tyler. And he's got to be scratching his head. This was his track. This is his yeah, home track. So exactly. that was a commanding win by Tyler here to take control of the championship. And he's doing a little, doing a little kook riding right there. <laughs> little, go some fun. little goon from, styles. From kook riding to wheelies. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> uh, absolutely fantastic. Well, I think he just put in, he knows, he just put in one spectacular ride. Mission Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. Right before we went to our billboards there, you can see uh, that uh, Tyler uh, given us the almost the Heisman Trophy move, but the, on the bike, right? Is that the Hussein Bolt? There it is, the, the bolt. Hussein Bolt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Signature uh, style. That was so cool. But, uh, you know, you can't say enough about that ride. That was just spectacular. That was textbook. Oh, I mean, yeah. he was, uh, I think he was back in fifth place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, fought his way back from a pretty terrible start. Yes. Um, 
to obviously pass his teammate <laughs> and take the win. Look at that. Now watch. Let's hope. And then right into a into a nice wheelie. Oh yeah, He's full just, goon. He full goon. Here. Look at that. High helmet. <laughs> yeah. Knee down, shoulders up. Big wave. Yeah. And then thumbs up and then he went right into the the uh the uh, hussein that was really cool here he comes and uh, man i'll tell you what a ride we just saw something pretty special here i think and jeremy mcwilliams i mean second again so close he wants that one bad and i think you're right i think it, it's going to be interesting to hear what andy says here because i think he's gonna be scratching his head just a little bit because i would be if i was him yeah. i mean this was a great opportunity for him and he's won races before he knows how to win so sure. that's got to be a bit of a challenge to see these two indians get by him there in the yes. last few laps yep. for this Mission Food Super Hooligan race, you know, and baby pepping your stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, all right. Looks like we're all staged. Time to get back down to Michael Hill. I can't wait to hear these interviews, Michael. What a race. Yeah, what a race uh, indeed. And uh, unfortunately, Tyler O'Hara has just actually walked uh, off to the left hand side. We were uh, ready. He's just going to move into uh, position. Uh, now uh, is Tyler. And uh, no, he's not. He's going to wave at the crowd. And uh, but that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll there we go. We'll let him have his uh, his moment. Uh, Tyler, what a cracking race that was. A, a move on the uh, penultimate lap. I uh, wasn't sure you were going to make the apex, but you got that nailed. Great job. Another 25 points. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, this hooligan class, Mission Foods, uh, Rolling Sands, everybody that put this class on and Moto America for having us. All these fans out here, we can hear you, we see you, we appreciate you. My whole team, SNS Cycles, Indian Motorcycle, Progressive, Medallia, everybody involved, drag specialties, my wife at home, I love you. 60 Helmets, Alpine Star. Again, all you fans for coming out, we appreciate you. Thank you guys for coming out. And, uh, just my whole team, I can't thank them enough. And uh, Andy Debrino, man, this is his home track, and hats off to him. He's riding awesome, and uh, I didn't really get to ride with him the whole weekend until the race. And, man, I knew he was going to be there, and my teammate, too. You know, he's old Wiley Fox, and he was putting the moves on us. And uh, took me to school there for a couple laps, and uh, just really enjoying this class. And uh, I think the fans are, too, and just uh, really having a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks to... Uh Tyler then, the uh, championship leader, of course, the defending champion. Let's move in and get a word with uh, Jeremy McWilliams. A wily old fox is uh, how he's described uh, by his teammate. And uh, he said uh, he went to school a bit there. You're showing him a few things. You certainly got off the line well uh, leading that. Uh, obviously disappointed not to win, Jeremy, but another 20 points. And, of course, another bite of the cherry tomorrow. I mean, the main thing is that we're both on the podium and at the point, the end of the podium, which is good. I obviously wasn't a wily enough old fox today. Uh, it was nice to lead it, and I just made, I started making a few mistakes and lo lost the front, and then my grip went away a little bit. But no excuses. Tyler rode a better race than I did, and I just need to improve tomorrow. Well, we look forward to seeing that, uh, Jeremy. Of course, a lot of people watching uh, back in uh, Northern Ireland and around the world. And let's move on then to uh, the local here. Yeah, come on, keep that applause going uh, to the fans uh, down here. He wanted a podium in front of the local fans, and the smile says it all. Uh, as uh, Tyler said, you rode a great race today, uh, a great podium. And of course, uh, like Jeremy, you get another shot tomorrow as well. Yeah, yeah, this is a good, uh, a good race for me. You know, it's nice to get a little redemption for Daytona, get back on the box, and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. We got a few things we want to change. Uh, I was a little tired from Super Sport, so uh, tomorrow will be nice. We race Super Hooligans first, and I, uh, I hope to wake up a little more feisty. It's just an honor to be out there with those guys and uh, racing with them. It was fun watching them. I was trying to catch up towards the end, but we caught some lappers, and I was just happy to get third there. So. We'll take it. The KTM is working good. My team's doing awesome. It's uh, always special to race in front of all the hometown fans and uh, can't thank everybody enough for coming out and supporting me. Absolutely great stuff. We're going to handbook upstairs, but what about it at the Ridge? Come on, let's hear you make some noise. Back to you, boys. Yeah, thanks very much. And uh, there's your winner. And I'll tell you, you know, one of the great things about this format is we get to do it again tomorrow. We get to enjoy this. And think about it, uh, a well-rested, and as Andy said, he's still starting from pole. These guys get another shot at it tomorrow, you, you know? You bet. Let's take a look at these highlights here. And a great start by Andy Nabrino. Look at that move by uh, Jake Lewis, uh, uh, rounding everybody up. Uh, didn't quite make it stick. And then Andy took off on that KTM. But Tyler O'Hara, who got kind of a little bit buried on the start, started a march up through the pack, Roland. Yeah, I mean, coming back from that far back, once you sometimes build that momentum too, you know, and you get to pass one person, you pass the next person, then you end up in the right spot at the right time. And more than, all, more than not, Tyler does that. 
Well, right there we watched Jeremy. That was in turn 11 where he made that beautiful pass. And then here was that pass to get around Debrino for second. And we thought that one was pretty darn good. And uh, down the hill we went. But watch this one, folks. I, like I said, uh, you know, he came from the next county uh, to make this pass. He's not being shy with his teammate. No, just stole yeah. it up in there. And uh, then parked it, got it done, and then rounded out down to the bottom and comes home with a win by about a second, uh, just a tick under a second for the win. And uh, McWilliams and Debrino right there. There you see it. And, uh, you know, when he thanked the fans, you know, and you see what he's doing here on this. Uh, he's having so much fun. That's for the fans. He's just showing off. These having guys, a good time. Yeah, yeah. And these, these are pros. They yeah. love racing for the fans. And for right now, Tyler O'Hara, three starts, three wins, perfect 75. 75 points to take that. Yeah, Jeremy McWilliams right there in uh, second, then a bit of a gap back to Mark Price, then Bobby Fong, who ended up fifth today, and Stefano Mesa uh, sitting there as well, then Andy Debrino, Corey West, Nate Kern, Kyle Onsorg. And looking at tomorrow's race, Andy gets to start up front, as we were talking about, but assuming that Stefano doesn't have an issue and misses the grid, he's going to start right up in the front once again in the middle of that second row. You look at what he did in this race, particularly that of uh, that first lap. Uh, I think, you know, he's going to be in the game. Well, you know, he got Jake Lewis right in front of him and Bobby Fong. So he's going to have some work to do oh. if he wants to yeah. if he wants to finish in the top five tomorrow. He's got yeah. some heat in front of him. No it ain't going to be him. easy, but yeah, that's why we easy. have the races, isn't yep, it? Yep, that's right. And uh, look at the celebrations here in the, for the podium. And uh, I'll tell you what. And tomorrow, uh, we've got a great day, of course, tomorrow. And I mentioned that we get to come back and do it all again tomorrow. And that's one of the things we love about this. So as we watch the podium celebrations, Tyler O'Hara, third win in a row, Jeremy McWilliams second, Andy Debrino in third, and completing the podium. Let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule. It all starts off in the morning with some warm-ups for Medallia Superbike, Mission Super Hooligan. Now, this is here on uh, Moto America Live Plus. There's going to be other warm-ups before these, but we'll be on the air live for this. Uh, then we kick it off with the Royal Enfield Bill Train Race, second race of the weekend. Then the Mission Roland Sand Super Hooligan National Championship Race 2. Then Revit Twins Cup Race 2, Super Sport Race 2 uh, coming at you as well. Then we wrap things up here. 3 p.m. local time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. The Medallia Superbikes out for Race 2. And that one, based on what we saw today, should be absolutely fierce as well. Going to be absolutely spectacular. And uh, we sure hope you come back and watch with us here at the Ridge Motorsports Park. And uh, look forward to bringing it to you as well. It's been a great day here. Once again, for, <coughs> excuse me, for Roger. Hayden for Michael Hill and of course for our special guest here Roland Sands big thank you everybody I'm Greg Kramer we look forward to having you back with us tomorrow whatever you do tonight please do it safely but have a lot of fun and we will see you back here tomorrow until then take care everybody